Okay, Dan Brown here, MGE Management Experts, and we're here for another client testimonial at the uh, MGE New Patient Workshop. And I'm here with Andrew Crouch. And uh, Andrew, thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Good. So, um, Andrew, you and your wife uh, came to MGE some years ago. I know it's been a while since you've been to the New Patient Workshop, but you learned the marketing basics, the marketing system that MGE talks about and such. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little idea of what your practice was when you first came and where things are now in contrast and what you learned. Sure. Um, so I know that when we first opened our practice, uh, my wife had never been in private practice. She was coming from a military background. Um, I'd never been in, in dentistry either. Um, and uh, I was, maybe it was a good thing not knowing um, <laughs> um, what we're getting ourselves into. But anyway, the, the, first, um, the first six months were, were pretty tough. Um, I mean, we uh, you know, we're struggling to, you know, to pay the bills. We certainly weren't paying ourselves uh, at that point. Um, and, um, you know, ironically enough, we received a postcard from, from MGE for a new patient workshop. And, and we said, you know, we need to learn more. Let's go and learn more. Um, and one of the things that, um, you know, we felt was um, a luxury to have was, you know, to go and spend those marketing dollars. You know, we, um, we figured, you know, we're, how can we how can we possibly you know afford this uh and so um it's one of the things that we you know we had a website but you know we really weren't doing any significant marketing and um you know going to the 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 new patient workshop we really better understood um the key importance of it and uh, at that time we had a, a marketing consultant and i said look there's just not there's no money in the bank account to pay for this um and uh and they said look um, send out some postcards and they, you know, MG helped us with the design um, and, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, again, speaking with, uh, with our consultant, he said, look, get 100 out, get 50 out, it doesn't even matter the number, just get some out. And, uh, and we did and there was a response and we said, wow, um, let's do more and more and more. Um, and uh, one of the, the big pieces, and I know there's different pieces to marketing, you know, with online and what have you, but um, in our practice in New York, um, uh, we got to the point of sending out uh, 25,000 postcards a week. Uh, that's over a million a year. Um, and the practice uh, grew more than we possibly could uh, imagine and expect. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we increased our revenue more than 10 times in less than a year and a half. Wow. Um, so at which point my, my wife got pregnant um, she wanted to move closer to family in Florida. Uh, we moved down to Florida. Um, the practice in New York was kind of running by itself. So we got bored. We had a child, opened another practice, um, another practice and another practice. And, um, and so uh, right now uh, we're at six practices, wow. um, six locations. Um, and, you know, we have this core, um, you know, that marketing is a significant piece. Uh, I know that um, one of the the things that um, you know highlights the importance of the marketing, particularly when you you kind of talk a little bit about this insurance and waiting for insurance to send patients into your practice, um, you're really putting that in someone else's hands, and you're never sure what that result is going to be. And so, particularly with our marketing, whether it be you know online or direct mail or radio or billboards or whatever it is. Um, you know, marketing is, is now a central piece in the operation of our practice and is one of the key reasons um, that, you know, we have been able to expand because we have that control. We know that, you know, if uh, the new patient count starts uh, dipping, well, you know, we need to send out some more postcards. We need to send out some letters. We need to, you know, do whatever the case may be. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is having that control and, you know, being able to to go into growth mode or go into you know whatever mode is you know is appropriate for the time it's been successful for us um, and i think you know one of the big things with the with a new patient workshop was they what they get you to fill out some forms to say what do you think your practice can do um, and um, and i can say you know far and above um, you know, we've been able to exceed that by, you know, putting in place the, the things that we've learned. Um, and, and once we started putting them in place, it started happening very quickly. So that was, you know, very exciting, obviously. So. Very exciting. I mean, really impressive. Yeah. And do you have a marketing consultant now or is that basically you? 
Um, yeah, that's that's basically me. Um, yeah, so we, uh, um, you know, we have uh, an agreement with our mail house. So we, you know, we send them, you know, the the mail routes and what have you, and um, and so. Um, it, it's largely on all, autopilot, I would say, is that, uh, you know, we have a, a set set of routes that we have per office and, and uh, they go out periodically. Um, you know, we have the radio, we have the, you know, we basically have a few vendors that we work with. Um, but yeah, to be, to be honest, I'm, I'm the marketing guy, I would say. Yeah. Awesome. Just awesome. Mm -hmm. So you have, it sounds like, the purpose of marketing being driving in more business than the organization could possibly ever waste mm -hmm. with internal inefficiency. So you've really done so. It sounds like you've got, you've got sure you could probably handle more, mm -hmm. but you've really conquered the, the basic barriers of where do I start? What do I do to keep my finger on the pulse of things? Mm -hmm. um, could you share a little bit about what are the avenues that you have now expanded into with your marketing? What, what are some of the channels that you use? And the specific marketing channels? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we have uh, a couple of different uh, direct mail. So we have um, uh, every door direct mail, uh, which basically within a, you know, somewhere between a three and five mile radius of the office, uh, every single person gets a postcard from us uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we do some high end uh, targeting uh, direct mail where, you know, it goes to, you know, more affluent households, um, sort of high end pretty packaging. Um, uh, we do internal, um, so, you know, people get, um, uh, you know, care to share cards, um, you know, refer a friend, um, you know, in the offices we have uh, TV screens, they're, you know, showing, uh, you know, different marketing pieces from, from the office. Uh, we do radio, uh, billboards, uh, we uh, did bus shelters for a while, um, uh, church magazines, um, um, uh, magazines that, that go into different demographics, uh, um, you name it. Um, I mean, there's there's a fair bit. Uh, I think I said we do radio, um, um, uh, newsletters at schools, um, and and in each of these, you know, we you know we have a, a tracking phone number on them, so we've got a pretty good idea of you know what's working and what doesn't, uh, and then the ones that work, we you know we we put a bit more you know, into it so that we can, you know, hopefully improve the, uh, improve the response. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know what Andrew's talking about, as far as a tracking number is in your marketing pieces, your different marketing channels, you, you want to be able to know, is that channel producing and what's making the phone ring, but what specific campaigns are making the phone ring and how much. So uh, what Andrew has instituted or, or some of the basics that we teach you in the new patient workshop, which is, yeah, definitely try these different channels, but let's make sure that we see what the result is of each of these channels. And it sounds like you really do have your finger on the pulse of also the return on investment. Mm -hmm. So do you routinely track your return on investment on these different channels and by channel? Um, to be honest, uh, not so much. Um, yeah. You know, we, we look at more of a global uh, marketing spend. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, our bread and butter, to be honest, is, is direct mail. You know, we know that... Um, you know that it works and we know that it, it brings in the the type of patients that uh, that we're looking for um, uh, but yeah I can't give you a, a hard and hard and fast on on per channel what the what the return on investment is sure but you but you're constantly monitoring your new patient statistics and adjusting your spend appropriately absolutely yeah and 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 now it's it's again it's almost on autopilot I mean so you know if uh, if we see uh, you know that we don't so uh, I mean I guess our, our goal is to see a thousand new patients per office um, and and so we you know uh, adjust accordingly uh, based on uh, on a weekly level you know how many new patients we've seen that week and uh, and then we we adjust accordingly but it, it, I don't know again it's kind of on, on autopilot if uh, if you know there's more new patients than we can handle then we ease it off because there's no point you know wasting the marketing spend and uh, and if you know, if things are, you know, a little bit light, then, you know, then we ramp it up again. But we, we basically have um, a prescription that, you know, we, we want to see 20 new patients a week per office. And, uh, and, that's, and that's our goal. And, and we adjust accordingly. Fantastic. Well, I can only tell you guys, congratulations on all the success. Six offices, uh, totally in command of your own marketing and, and more so. Any last thing that you would say as far as suggestion to somebody kind of on the fence? You know, they don't know MGE, they don't know Dan Brown and these marketing mm. guy and this marketing mm. system. Any other words of advice to another practice owner or practice couple? 
Um, sure. Um, so, like I think, I think the the discussion that that often happens with with almost any office and any clinician is is usually to do with insurance. Um, and I know that for us, we we did a little bit of a toe in the water with it to see, you know what the effectiveness of that was. And I can say, you know, fire and away, um, you know, take control. Take control of, of what, you know, you're trying to do and what your goals and aspirations are, rather than leaving it to the hands of, um, of uh, an organization that, you know, their goals are not aligned to yours. So, so that's the thing is, please just put assurance to the side, forget about it, and, uh, and take control of your, your own destiny. Yeah. Sound advice. Andrew, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it. And again, well done on your awesome success. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Yeah. And for you watching this, you deserve the same success. At the MGE New Patient Workshop, I'm going to show you a system to get your practice seeing more high quality new patients right away. As a matter of fact, the average attendee sees a sustained 42% increase in new patients. We've helped your colleagues to generate millions of new patients and over $750 million in additional revenue just since we've done this workshop. And you might say, well, what does that mean to me? Well, I can tell you this. If you're seeing about 30 new patients per month, that's gonna be 12 more new patients for you every single month. That's 150 more new patients every year. And we'd really like to help you with that. So sign up today. Go ahead and click the link below to find out more I look forward to meeting you there.